So here, once again, I'd like to welcome you all to a fresh discussion in Shiksha Mantra and this discussion is nothing but the continuation or the part 4 of our discussion of sentence diagramming. Yes, dear friends, that's a very important topic in English grammar what we were discussing. So here we must remember that already we had covered the very simple form of sentence diagramming. We have covered how to handle the subjects in sentence diagramming. We have also covered how to handle the object in sentence diagramming. If you haven't checked those videos, the link would be there in the description box below and also in the i button above. Some, uh, so from there you can check it. And also there's another link I would put. It would uh, tell you the best five steps that you'd have to take to learn English grammar and there you'd find out what's the importance of sentence diagramming. Now, we are in the part four of our discussion and here we want to discuss about the simple diagramming. Rather, we we'll discuss what? We we'll discuss the other components like complements, interjection and how these loose things, I call them loose things or uh, things which describes something. So how they are related to the verb and how they are attached to the sentence. What logic is there in it? So we would find out the logic behind what? Behind those things that gets attached to a sentence. So let's find out. So here we are with our 14th rules of sentence diagramming and what's the rules it's about predicate noun yes dear friends when we find a noun in a predicate so how it is first we have to learn what is a predicate noun though we want to go in details of this because uh, we would uh, create an, uh, another video for predicate noun but here we we'll just check the sentence first and we'll have a very short discussion over it so Sachin is a singer now if you consider this word singer this is a noun and it's used as an adjective for describing Sachin the subject so it describes Sachin the subject but this is not an adjective this is a noun so this is a predicate noun now how would cage this you may check it out just like what we have done earlier searching that is the subject then comes is the verb and then we put what we put this predicate noun or singer and we have a so we'd put it like this as we have already seen that uh, we put uh, the articles like this but where is the difference here between an object and a predicate is there anything that we may say different that we have done here in KG? Yes, dear friends, follow this slash. For objects, we are putting a straight line. But here, as it's a predicate noun, it's a complement, we have slashed it. We have made a slash. So it's not related to the verb. It's very important. Singa doesn't have relation with the verb, rather it has relation with the subject. So here we aren't using a slash, sorry. So here we aren't using a straight line, a separator, rather we are using a slash as a separator. And it says that this is not an object, rather this is a complement. This is what? This is a predicate noun. So that's all from these rules. Now we would shift to our 15th rules. So let's go. So here we are with the 15th rules of our discussion and what the rule says. Yes, the rule says objective complement. Yes, dear friends, this is something that we have to learn very well complements, but they are objective complements. Okay, for the last occasions, we have found out that a complement is meant for the subject, but here it's meant for the object. That's why we call it objective complement, but how? For this, we have to read the sentence. Ricky painted his old jalopy purple. So Ricky painted what? 
his old jalopy so jalopy that's the object now we have to complete the sense of the object and we have put purple so purple is the objective complement and for uh, some purposes i have written it in red why to point out that this is the thing that we are going to learn so we are going to learn the positioning of purple that's why i have painted it red there and then i have written it in black so let's check out how it works the same thing would be here as well ricky that's the subject then painted that's the verb what jalopy so this is the object this is the object of the sentence and it has two different adjectives that is his and old that's why i have put them together as it is done we have already learned it and now comes the turn for purple so this is our objective complement and it's related to the object and not to the subject so after the object we have put a slash just we have learned it in the other occasion last occasion in 14th rules so here we would put a slash and plus purple as the objective complement and our caging and the very logical representation of our sentence diagramming is complete so that's how we deal with objective complement and now we proceed towards the 16th rules so now we are in the 16th rules but here if you look at the board what you'd find i haven't written any sentence there's no diagram because this is not a single rules rather this is a combination of three different rules yes dear friends we are going to discuss reflexive pronouns yes reflexive pronouns they can be used as object in a sentence in three different ways and what are they we have already learned it it can be used as direct object it can be used as indirect object and also as object to a propositions so we have three different types to be caged here to diagram here in our sentence diagram learning so we are going to part them into three different parts and would learn them separately one after another so stay tuned and very keenly observe how we do them okay so let's begin so we are here with the first part that is as direct object how we cage reflexive pronouns in sentence diagram so read the sentence first raj cut himself now if you look at this sentence very keenly you would find out that here himself that is used as the reflexive object who cut himself raj okay so it has relation with what it has relation with subject but remember dear friends it's not like those complement or predicate noun rather this is used as a direct object so its caging would be just the same as we have done in object and there is the simple caging the very simple skeleton that we have used in our simple diagramming here raj is used as the subject cut as verb and himself the reflexive pronoun as the object so very simple this is just you don't have to do anything simply put them together into svo format and the caging and your sentence diagram would be complete so now we would check what we would check the indirect object as indirect object how a reflexive uh, pronoun is used we have to read this sentence first as indirect object madhu gave herself a raise madhu gave herself a raise so madhu gave whom herself so this is an indirect object and we have already learned how to put an indirect object into sentence diagramming and would follow the same rules if you check it out here subject verb this is our direct object raise we have learned it and for indirect object we have put them here by making a separate part so it's an indirect object it has direct relation with the verb it's a direct object it has also relation with the verb so we have to show that these two objects are closely related to the verb we have already done it 
in our discussion of uh, caging of indirect objects. So that's how we may handle a reflexive pronoun used as an indirect object. And now it's time for what? It's time for propositional object. So let's shift to the third part of this discussion. So here we are with proposition. Yes. When a reflexive pronoun is used as an object of a proposition. So how it goes? Here's the sentence. She cared only for herself. Now this reflexive pronoun is used as the object for what? For this proposition. So this is not the object of a verb. It's not a direct object or indirect object. Rather, it's used as a object for a proposition. So how object to a proposition is handled here in our sentence diagram, there's the rules. She cared. We have put the subject and then the verb. Okay. Now this proposition for it's related to the verb cared. So cared for and then we have put the object that is the propositional object that is the reflexive pronoun herself. So that's how we have to find the skeleton of those reflexive pronouns in our sentence diagramming. So let's shift to our next points that is 17th rules. So here we have the 17th rules and it says intensive pronouns. Yes, dear friends, sometimes reflexive pronouns are also used for the purpose of intensification and this is we know as emphatic pronoun. So how the sentence goes? The sentence goes, I myself prefer hockey. The sentence can be produced otherwise, I prefer hockey myself. So here, whatever it may be the uh, position of myself, it doesn't matter much. It's an emphatic pronoun or intensive pronoun. So when it's an intensive pronoun or an emphatic pronoun, you have to put it like this. It is intensifying what? It's intensifying the subject. So with the subject, you would put it into a bracket, then the verb and then the object. The rest of the things would be just like our formation of simple sentence. So we have very simply covered the intensive pronoun or the emphatic pronoun. There's nothing to get tensed with. With what? Sentence diagramming. Sentence diagramming is really very, very easy. If you just follow these logic together, follow the logic, there's no other thing to be done. Only follow the logic and put it into the skeleton, your answer would always be right. Okay, so now shift to our next rules, that's the 18th rules for this discussion of part 4 sentence diagramming. So let's go. Yes, dear friends, in the 18th rules, we have appositives. Appositives, that appositives. We have already made a very detailed video regarding a positive in this channel only and I would put the link in the description below. So if you find anything difficult regarding a positives, if you have forgotten or if you uh, don't know what a positive is, how it works and what the grammar hidden behind the a positives, you can visit that video. You can check it from the uh, description box below you can click the link and learn a positives but for here in our sentence diagramming we'd keep it short and we'd see what's the sentence is and the sentence says Avan the poet fought in a battle so who was Avan Avan was the poet now we'd uh, put it Avan then poet so this is again put into a bracket and there's the so we have put the article here as well so oven the poet we have completed it and the rest would be what we have done earlier fought battle where in and there's the article a uh. so that's how we can handle a positive it's very easy so now it's our time to shift to the 19th rules of our discussion so let's go so here we are with the 19th rules and it says what direct address Yes, dear friends, we also know it as vocative case. Yes, that's very important. So vocative case or direct address, when we find them in a sentence, what we do? We do such things. Mom, I found my book. 
So you have lost your book and your mom uh, has uh, asked you to find it yourself and now you have found it out. So what you would say, mom, I have found my book. So mom, that's the vocative case or the direct address and it's not a part of the sentence. You must remember, it doesn't have any relation with the sentence. It's not uh, making any sense for the sentence. It's only uh, to draw attention. So we'd put it here at the top of the main sentence diagramming and then we diagram the rest of the sentence as it demands. So that's how we can handle direct objects. So here it is. Now it's time for us to shift to our 20th rules. So let's check out. So now here is our 20th rules interjection. Yes, dear friends, when you are dealing with sentences, obviously you would face interjections. So how to put them into your sentence diagram. So that's our discussion. Oh, it hurts. So that's the sentence. Oh, it hurts. And this is the interjection. So how will put it? Remember, just like direct addresses, interjection are also add a flavor in a sentence, but they don't have uh, to do anything with the main frame, with the main structure of the sentence. They are not a part of the main structure. So the same logic has been put here as well. So you have to put the interjection at the top of the sentence, pretty separate from the main structure and then cage the sentence just as we do subject and the verb and what we have learned. So the rest of the sentence would be caged, would be diagrammed as just the demand. But you have to put the interjection separately on the top of it and that's it from our discussion of the 20th rules that is interjection. So it's time to say something else. So dear friends, here the part 4 of our discussion of sentence diagramming ends and you have to wait for the fifth part of this discussion and it's coming very soon, probably in one or two days. But each and every rules that I have discussed here have to be very keenly observed and learned. It, it uh, All the efforts that I have put here in uh, discussing the sentence diagramming, they would be fruitful if you can learn them properly from this discussion. So try hard, try very, very hard to learn this very important part of your English grammar. If you learn this, I can challenge you. I can guarantee 100% that you'd do anything in English grammar. English grammar would be very easy for this. There won't be any difficulty and you won't forget any component of English grammar if you can sentence diagram successfully. So learn it learn it properly we are returning very soon with the fifth part until then happy learning